just about set to begin. Matt Pulsifer doing his usual cheerleading routine at about the 25-yard line. Now he'll get ready to kick. Excellent crowd. to receive the kickoff, Jason Cooper, number 83, and Mark Atuaya, both standing at their goal line. We're underway. Pulsifer's kick is away. They both want it, but it ends up in the hands of Cooper. Cooper wrapped up just shy of the 20-yard line, and Ofa makes the tackle, and so the Cougars will take over. Our first series is coming your way. A little bit of a problem with the sunshine. It's low in the winter sky from the southwest. And it's going to be a bit of a problem looking back into it for the team that has the ball that is going to the north. There's the numbers on John Walsh. Over 3,000 yards passing this year. Number two in the whack in total offense. And our first play from Skinner. And they'll keep it on the ground with Jamal Willis. Willis will pick up a few. You get about four, maybe five on the carry, coming strong off the right side behind that big right side of that offensive line, Pilgrim and Heron. You know, the, the funny thing on that formation, Steve Clements, the backup quarterback, was lined up at a wide receiver. Some trick play they might be working on. Who knows? But he was in there. Let's take a look at the uh, offense brought to you by Christensen, Chevrolet, Buick, and Geo. There's Willis and Hamuli, two great backs. And a huge offensive line, Eli Herring, over 300 pounds. Quick pass outside to Doman. And Doman almost got away from the tackle, but you know who's there. Number four, Kareem Leary. And clearly one of the uh, star defensive backs in the WAC as we look at the rest of the Ute defense. There's that line. Now, there's four of them, but they really play about eight guys. Kafusi Ellis, the other Kafusi and Bronzo. But you'll see Kia and Wilson and DeCastro on there. Great linebackers. Derek Stapley, Rexford, the team's leading tackler. And, of course, Kareem Leary and Ernest Boyd. They lead the whack in interceptions, six apiece. And Leary has returned a couple for touchdowns. And Lusk has done the same. Third down and three. Walsh to throw, gets it out to Hay Mooley. Hay Mooley wrapped up, but he gets away and he'll have the first down. Still on his feet, he's tough to bring down. Finally dropped by Edwin Garrett. But good second effort on the part of Hema Hay Mooley. Just good power. He was tackled about the first hit, about three yards short of first down. Ends up about four yards past the first down marker. Just great effort by Hay Mooley. It's a short throw, he gets it there. He's hit once, gets away from that tackler, runs through another one, and then it takes three Utes to get him down. Emma Hamuli just happy to be here today. Last week after the San Diego State game, rolled his car on the freeway five or six times. Fortunately, he walked away with just some bumps and bruises. First and ten for the Cougars. And it will be slipping to the ground. Now, Bronzo Moore was right there, but it looked like Jamal lost some footing, but he wasn't going anywhere even if he'd stayed up. He did lose the footing, but Bronzel Miller was the reason. He saw, <laughs> looked up, saw Bronzel coming, tried to make a quick cut, couldn't get it done. There he sees him. Whoops. Yeah, he goes down. That'll be a loss of about two and a half yards, three yards for the Cougars, so it'll be second and 13. And as we pointed out, the Cougars running on first down both times in this series, run to set up the throw. is Mike Johnston in motion for the Cougars. Walsh back to throw again. He's looking out for intercepted. Lusk. Harold Lusk comes up with his fourth interception of the season. And Neil, we said at the top of the game, turnovers would be a factor. This throw goes right through the hands of the intended receiver. And Lusk makes a great catch right off the tops of his shoes. He was looking for his tight end, Chad Lewis. He couldn't squeeze it. You'll get a look at it here again. Walsh looking left, then comes back over the middle, right through there, and Lusk with a pick right off the top of his shoes. You know, last year, Utah jumped to that 14-3 lead off of uh, turnovers, interceptions. In fact, Harold Lusk had one of those in last year's game. The 
Utes come out with three wide receivers and now call it five as McCoy moves into the shotgun and no one in the backfield. Utes going to throw to set up the run. Here's the first throw. It's complete just shy of the 20-yard line. The knee was down, though, so they will not be able to move any uh, forward from there. Chris Yari, so let's set the offense now. And, of course, it's led by Mike McCoy, approaching 2,800 yards passing on the season. Number three, the whack of total offense. There's his backs and uh, receivers. Claiborne and Marsh, probably the best one-two punch in the conference. And, of course, the line, it's a big line. You want to keep Lance Scott healthy. There's some big guys there. The starting lineups brought to you by Christensen Chevrolet Buick Geo, Utah County's largest automobile dealer. McCoy looking to the air again. There's a flag down. The pass is completed for a three-yard pickup. But let's check the flag. Check the flag out. It's just a real quick bootleg pass to the tight end on the right side. But they've, the flag went down almost immediately. Could have been something right at the line of scrimmage. Appears to be from the reaction against Utah. Upsides, BYU. Personal foul, BYU. Oh, that, boy. Now that's a big one. This is going to hurt. One of the Cougar players over there trying to talk to an official. And I would suggest that he turn around and get out of there. It's Jamie Cook, a defensive back. I don't know what the play was, but he wanted to know who the foul was on and why. Here comes the official all the way across the field. That pass was to Chris Jarry's. Two passes in a row to this kid. We haven't heard much from him all year. Think we're doing anything different this week? Oh my goodness. That penalty is declined, followed by personal foul, late hit out of bounds against the defense, half the distance to the eight-yard line, first down. We're going to ask the Utes how penalties hurt. <laughs> Well, the use have been penalized 838 yards. We were talking before the game. That's more yardage than Charlie Brown has gained all year. That's too much. First and goal from the eight-yard line. McCoy with daylight. Has daylight. He could get in close. He stopped at the three-yard line. McCoy had room to run. Run down from behind by Scott Albrecht, the linebacker, who pulled him down from behind as he slowed up to wait for a block. Let's take a look at the BYU defense. Randy Brock anchoring that defensive line. Travis Hall at the other end. And Ross, of course, one of the twins. There's Stan, his twin brother, Muirbrook and Simmons. And then the defensive backfield. You'll also see uh, Dermell Reed in there at times. Higgins getting about his third start of the year, I think, for Reed at the corner. Second and goal. McCoy with Brown behind him. Charlie Brown. Charlie Brown is wrapped up. At least five Cougars in on that, led by Randy Brock and Dennis Simmons. Brock just refused to be blocked on that play. Would not be taken out of it. And the defensive end, Paul, there also. Travis helping to make the stop. So the defense of BYU stacking them up. And that's going to leave Utah with a third and goal from the three-yard line as the official stops things for a moment. Called a timeout, then walked right into the Utah huddle talking to him there. I'm not sure what it's about. The Utah team will know he was quite vehement about it. Now he's calling the Cougars players in this may have something to do with talking on the field that's it. he's trying to contain it rather than let it get away and have to call penalties <laughs> well that's interesting he's trying to nip it in the butt boy when you get these two teams together as you do in any big rivalry though you're going to have a lot of that third down and three folks utah trying to get into the end zone Marsh is on the right side. Cougars showing blitz. Coming after McCoy. He got it away into the end Almost zone. intercepted, incomplete. but it's incomplete, so the Utes will have to settle for a field goal. Looks like Rick Tucker was the intended target, but boy, you said blitz was coming, and Marsh, or excuse me, McCoy, said he didn't have any time. 
just didn't have time to pick out the receiver he wanted. He had two to the left, had a crossing pattern working there, but didn't have a chance to look over there. Bank one conference leaders on the third down conversions. You see that Utah's fourth in the conference, BYU seventh. So this, this is a good stand for the Cougars. Yeah, after an interception and a couple of costly penalties, a 20-yard field goal attempt for Dan Pulsifer. And he got it. The Utes are on the scoreboard. They convert a turnover into three points. And with the score, Utah 3, BYU 0. We'll be right back after this for Southwest Airlines, the low fare airline. This is evening wear for Neil Hansey with this guy dressed for a football game. There are a few of those around. That's, when you walked into the stadium today, you could get quite a variety of garb from either side. And several who were wearing all three colors, red, white, and blue. That's right. Three nothing our score. The Utes convert an interception into a field goal. And Dan pulls for once again, trying to get this crowd on their feet. Jason Cooper, Mark Atuaya, standing at the goal line. And that kickoff sponsored by Ken Garf, where they back up every car they sell. And the Utes, too. And it's Cooper again. Cooper hit at the 15-yard line and dropped. Jeremy Drews on special teams. Let's go down on the field to Sharif. I tell you what, Dave, if you notice the last drive, BYU had no problem in converting those third downs, and that's primarily because Utah had an enormous amount of missed tackles. That's the same thing that drove them to lose to New Mexico and the same thing that drove them to lose to Air Force. They're going to have to tighten up and try to stop these third down conversions. Back to you. Sideline reports brought to you by Southwest Airlines. Lonnie, the low for airline is just plain smart. Even Coach McBride has said that all week. we got to just get back to tackle. And right now, we're looking for Jamal Wilson. He's wrapped up by Kafusi. Jeff Kafusi from the defensive end just got the penetration and Paul Willis down for a loss. Just something else. You see him just coming through. And Willis can't do a thing about it. Kareem Leary up there to help at the end. Jeff Kafusi, one of two Kafusis playing on this team. And of course, a third one. Steve is on the sideline helping out with coaching chores. The University of Utah football is sponsored in part by R.C. Willie, Utah's biggest, and one of America's finest home furnishing stores. Two yard loss makes it second and 12 for Walsh. Walsh to the air. Pass is complete to Hay Mooley. He is one of their leading receivers coming out of the backfield. And Hey Mooley dances up to the 24-yard line before Mark Rexford, he's the Utes' leading tackler, finally brings him down. But Hey Mooley is so dangerous. He's, he is the number two receiver on this team, and he's a running back. He just curls out of the backfield, then reads the linebackers, goes to where they have, may have vacated, dropping to cover a tight end. He split them that time, and then he runs well with the football after he gets it. Third down, they need one. think he got it. I don't think so. Luther Ellis, number 83, the man-child from Mancos, Colorado, is right there. So much for your third down conversion, Sharif. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy, Neil going to work early on Sharif today, folks. Well, he's out there standing wearing the sunshine, you know. <laughs> we have to be up here in this booth in the shade. There's Luther. Luther told me, he says, I never want to be treated the way I was after a BYU loss again. He knows what it means to win this game. Makes for a much nicer offseason. And both Cougars and Utes know all about that. That's Curtis Marsh standing at his 30-yard line. The punt is short. Just leave it alone. Takes a BYU bounce and a roll all the way down to the 22-yard line. So that's Alan a heck of a Borden. Punt. A 52-yard kick that flew 32 and then bounced Took a big the last bounce. 20. Yeah. Can you compute that for us? <laughs> <laughs> I'm looking over at our statisticians. Alan Borden getting that one away. Just a sophomore from that lab. Which will take over at the 23-yard line. Leading three to nothing. 
And twice they've held the Cougars now. And now the Utes with really their first uh, full offensive drive here. They took over before down deep in BYU territory. First and 10 for Mike McCoy. He's got Charlie Brown and Rob Hamilton behind him. Charlie Brown. And Brown will have a couple, but not much. It's, you know, it's tough to run on this BYU defense. Tough to run on his defense with the size they have at the defensive tackles. And he has three quick and aggressive linebackers that fill those holes quickly. Charlie gets about three on the carry. There's Charlie Brown, second in the wagon, scoring behind Jamal. 732 yards. And 10 touchdowns for Charlie, who's really had a nice season. Second down, they need seven. Four wide receivers for McCoy Brown behind him. McCoy's pass batted down at the line. John Ross was there. Looked like Travis Hall also, and it may have been Hall who got the hand up. I think so. It was Hall who knocked it away. John Ross was right alongside him. I mentioned those scoring leaders a moment ago on the Bank One Conference leaders there. There's Jamal Willis, number one, averaging 7.6 points per game, and Charlie right behind him. And then you got the two kickers. And Curtis Marsh involved there. That check of the conference stats made possible by Bank One. Call their 30-minute loan by phone. 1-800-352-LEND. Third down and seven. Cougars drop out of the blitz. McCoy. He's got room, but somebody could breaks. almost run for it. He got it. McCoy gets the first down on his own. Randy Brock finally there, but as you pointed out, if uh, if he makes a move, he had plenty of room to run for. Cougars, as you said, set up looking like they were going to blitz it, then dropped out of it. That meant a four-man rush that was blocked pretty well. McCoy rolls away, gets away from the defensive end. Now he's trying to decide. Here he says, okay, I'll get it myself. And he does. Nine-yard pickup for Mike McCoy. If, if you're comparing these two quarterbacks, most people would give the uh, arm strength in that to Walsh and, and perhaps the running ability to Mike McCoy, who picks up nine right there, first and ten. Charlie Brown. And Brown fights for a couple, but again, the Cougars, Mike Ulafali right in there, and the posse joins him. And they, they close that hole in a hurry. They give Charlie about three, three and a half yards on that carry, and that's a good game on first down. It gives you the option of what you want to do with the next couple of plays. Yeah, it's a good game, especially on a defense like BYU's, as you pointed out before, that was so big. Second down at seven, three nothing our score here. We approach five and a half to play in the first quarter. It's the rivalry. Dave Fox along with Neil Hansey and Sharif Shaw on the sideline. The Utes and the Cougars. Cougars showing some blitz here. And Mike McCoy did not like the looks of that. He looked like he might have wanted to change the play, but he only had two seconds. He saw them fake the blitz, tried to, wanted to check it off, saw the clock was down at two and had to change it. There's Brandon Jones, a backup quarterback that sends in the signals. But right now, McCoy puts on the headset, and we'll be back. Ever wonder what coaches talk about in those silly phones? That's L-A, capital V-E-L-L. -L. Hello, Bank One. L-A, capital V-E-L-L. -L. Sure, it's a steady job. <clears throat> I think. Lavelle. It rhymes with Lavelle. You can call Bank One's 30-minute loan by phone <clears throat> from home or wherever you happen to work. Hold it down. I'm trying to get a loan here. In BYU. And as you so astutely pointed out just before we started out, the uh, school named after Brigham Young taking on the school founded by Brigham Young. That's true. Very true. You saw the rushing yards there. BYU with minus one and the Utes at 24. And the Utes on the drive now. They got a second down and seven again. The Cougars showing blitz. So Mike drops back into a shotgun to avoid the blitz. The Cougars drop out of it. McCoy's pass out complete to his big tight end, Rick Tucker. He'll be about two yards shy of a first down, but he picked up a couple. And that's a quick read, and the tight end just slides out on the linebacker, gets a step on him, 
catches the ball. He's on his way out of bounds when he gets hit. It's just it's almost a chess game. You know, yep. they they show blitz, he backs off, they back off. The thing that you know is that there are four down linemen. If the three linebackers all come up in the line, you know that you haven't got enough people to block if they do come. Third and two. They need two yards again. McCoy backs off into the shotgun. Here comes the blitz. It's coming. Pass is complete. It's Curtis Marsh. Marsh may it's go all race. the way it's if he can hurry. Race. He's got it. Touchdown, Utah. Today he goes 57 yards, and the Utes up 9-0, waiting for the point after. That's just a quick slant in against the blitz. Patrick Mitchell was playing him to the outside shoulder. Marsh comes inside and then outruns him. And Pulsifer is perfect this year on point afters. He's hit all 45, and the Utes have a 10-0 lead. Kickoff sponsored by TCI Cable Vision of Utah. They're taking television into tomorrow. Jason Cooper will once again his third kickoff return of this game. And Cooper nailed at the 10 yard line. Toby Richards, number 47. Let's go back to that touchdown, Neil. And once again, Curtis Marsh just gets behind the uh, defense backs. Top of the screen, starts down and then breaks it off inside against Patrick Mitchell. Just a quick slant. Now it's a foot race. All he's got to do is break the plane with the football. He knows Patrick's coming. And here he dives, gets the football in at the corner. That's our R.C. Willie best seat in the house. Great finish by Curtis. Yep. You can see him starting to lead. Give him style points there. First and 10 for the Cougars, down 10-0. Hey, Mooley is in the backfield. And he gets the call. And hey, Mooley picks up a couple before he is hit at the line. I saw Henry Cafusi there. Mark Rexford came up. And the BYU running game is running into some troubles here, Neil. Willis has four carries. Only one is for positive yardage. That's true. And the defensive line and linebackers. Watch hey, Mooley. There's a hole there right now. And then it closes. And it closes with a vengeance. Mark Rexford is there to make the stop. He actually got two yards on that, so it's a second down and eight. Hey, Louis and Willis behind Walsh. Walsh to the air. Going deep. Going deep. Oh, a great catch, but it was out of bounds. Dolman, great presence to hang on to that thing, but Edwin Garrett was right there, just stride for stride with him, and Dolman was out of bounds. That's a fine catch. That's a nice throw by Walsh, with one exception. Get it up a little higher and a little further out front. This one goes a lot further, but great position by Boyd. University of Utah, sponsored in part by your local Ford dealer. See the new 1995 lineup at your local Ford dealer today. It's third down and eight. They need to get just past the 20-yard line. Walsh is in trouble. Gets it out of trouble and completes the pass. Cougars have a first down, and there's the versatility of Jamal Willis. Is Willis. that Jamal Willis? Yep, coming out of the backfield. One of the reasons that Walsh was in trouble is that Willis did not read the rush and drifted outside. Now here comes the pressure. Walsh has got to step up, and now he's glad that Willis Ooh. didn't throw a block and got out there where he could get, get the first down. First and 10 for the Cougars. John Walsh leading the attack with junior quarterback, looking to go outside. Passes just beyond the fingertips. So that will go incomplete. And it was Johnston. Mike Johnston. Just trying to get five or six yards on first down, which gives you better options second and third. If you can get decent yardage on first down, then you, you decide whether you want to run or throw. You get nothing on first down, the defense knows you're going to have to put the ball in the air. The numbers on John Walsh from Torrance 
California. Said he grew up a big fan of the Miami Hurricanes. The BYU opportunity was just perfect for him. Second Drop it. Hey, Mooley. And Hey Mooley has the catch before he's run out of bounds by Mark Rexford. So a good pickup on second down. They'll be about four yards short of the uh, first down as they faked the draw play there. Faked the draw play very well and faked me out. But then throw the ball to the man you faked to. Works very well. Watch the fake inside to Hey Mooley. Right there. He doubles up like he's got it. Walt steps back and then finds Hey Mooley out in the flat. Blue Shield, a proud sponsor of University of Utah football. Blue Cross and Blue Shield, the company of choice. Third down three. Tied in. Chad Lewis has the first down right over the middle. Mark Rexford is there, but Chad Lewis, a fine receiver out of Orem High School. Or was that uh, Mealy? That was Mealy. 95 is uh, Mealy. 96 is Lewis. Now, this is a play. Tight end just settles down between the linebackers when you don't need big yardage. It's a nice, safe throw. But I can tell you this, Lewis is a great receiver, too. <laughs> yeah, he is. There's a Tula Mealy from Hawaii. 28 receptions, four for touchdowns coming into this game, and another first down for the Cougars as they're on the drive, trailing 10 nothing. There's your draw play. Nothing doing. Bronzel Miller is there to collide with Hema Haymuli. Evan Pilgrim trying to get the block on Bronzel Miller. And Miller runs right through it. What a defensive play by Bronzel. Watch it out on the left side. There's the pull. There's the block. Miller comes right through it to make the tackle. Bronzel Miller just very, very fast. 6'4", 245 pound senior. Pilgrim's got size at 290 pounds, but Bronzel able to get around in second down 13, a loss of three. Walsh rolling out. He's looking to, to go deep for Johnston. Gets out of trouble there, and it's a throw back for Haymuli. But you know, Jeff Kafusi was right there. It almost looked like Jeff was going for the ball. Jeff went right by him. He made Walsh pull it down as he was looking out to the right side, trying to find the receiver coming down the near sideline. He had to pull the ball down. By the time he did, the coverage was there, and he had to go the other way behind another receiver. So Walsh earning everything he's getting in this drive. And a couple of bullets. Last year passed for 423 yards against Utah, but he had five interceptions. Right here, he needs 13 yards out of the shotgun. Straight four man rush. Walsh has plenty of time. Pass was tipped. It was intended for Tim Nowatsky. But guess who was there again? Number four. That guy, Kareem Leary. And on the Bank One Conference leaders, you see that. BYU is number one in passing offense, but Utah is number one against the pass, and right there, they showed why. Excellent play by Leary. Walsh looked to have his man there and available, but Leary closed quickly on the ball and tapped it away. Alan Boardman at his 29-yard line. Curtis Marsh at his 15. Nice punt this time, and Marsh fields it at the 10. No help. No help at all. There were five Cougars there to make the hit, and Lane Hale is the one that brought him down. 47-yard kick for Alan Boardman, and the Utes take the ball once again. So the Ute defense holding up so far. Doing a good job against the Cougars. There's Kareem Leary, and a former defensive stalwart himself, Sharif Shaw, is on the sideline with our Southwest Airlines sideline report. Sheriff? I tell you what, Dave, this game will never lose intensity, momentum, no enthusiasm. Defense is fired up, offense is fired up. This is a great one, and they just have to keep it up. Offense has to remain productive and consistent throughout this entire half and going into this next quarter. Back to you, Dave. That's a good point about into the next quarter, because that has been the downfall of the Utes. Right now, they're up 10-0. They build up leads in the last few weeks of 17-0, 21-3. They haven't been able to finish, and that's what they're trying to do today. That's Rob Hamilton stacked up. Greg Pitts in there. A couple of yards at the most for Hamilton. It was the lone setback. It is a two-yard game. Hamilton playing his last game, of course, for the Utes and only got to play one year. There's David Kozlowski. We saw him take a, just a ferocious hit at New Mexico a couple of weeks ago. 
with a contusion to his kidney, he's done. Second down and eight. McCoy to throw. Needs to get rid of it. Throws the ball over to the sideline. It is caught by the big tight end, Jaris, but it's caught out of bounds. And again, that pursuit of that defensive line of the Cougars is all over McCoy. The outside people getting good penetration. McCoy throwing the ball up where he knew his guy would be the only one who could catch it. Is there contact? No, I don't think he could have gotten down inbounds anyway. Gus Paulo Chevrolet is proud to be a sponsor of University of Utah football. That'll bring up a third and eight. Utes need to get to the 25-yard line. Rob Hamilton behind McCoy, and Mike has four wide receivers. Again, the Cougars showing some blitz. Straight for me and rush. And the pass intended for Marsh, but Mike Ulufali got the big hands up. And the big 275-pound junior from Hawaii knocked the pass down. That's the second one that McCoy's had batted down. And this is the second attempt to throw this little pass underneath. But watch this. Coming right back at you. Matter of fact, threw that way too low. Hit him almost in the chest. Jason Jones back to do the punting. Cougars should have their best field position to start a drive if they handle a punt. Mike Johnston at his 40. And wrapped up after a 43-yard kick. Sione Mahe. And as you say, Neil, good field position for the Cougars after their defense holds up. Just shy of midfield. Packers their best field position of the day. Walsh looking to throw. Now he's got his tight end outside, but Chad Lewis, the hand. Mike Johnson going in motion on second and ten for the Cougars. Walsh to throw again. It's coming. And again, good coverage this time. They're going to call pass interference, no, though. That, call that. that surprises me because Ernest Boyd had the inside position following the ball the you whole way. You cannot call that pass interference. Chad Lewis, the intended receiver. That's terrible. That's absolutely terrible. You know, I, I thought for a moment they were going to call it on Lewis. Watch this. Boyd's on the inside. Then oh, Lewis is pulling wow. him down. That's such that, a bad that's, call, that I can't bad. believe it. You, you could almost have called that offensive pass. Yeah, you could have. Long before you could call a defensive interference, Boyd is right in his lap. He's got every right to be there. Wow. Ron McBride agrees with me. I think most people here, you know, even if you're watching that on TV, it doesn't matter, who, you know, which team you're a fan of, you can clearly no, see that, bad call. that, yeah, they, the defender has the inside position on that one. It's a first and ten for the Cougars, and the pass is complete out of the flat. The ball was fumbled. Ernest Boyd tried to pick it up, but it's out of bounds. But another completion to Chad. Four-yard pickup. That'll give the Cougars a second down and six. And as you say, certainly gives you more options. Going to fire it out the line and a big hit. That was Mark Atuaya, the receiver, but Jeff Kirkman right there to nail him from behind. Kirkman had a clear block his running with the Utes leading 10 0, but BYU trying to get on the scoreboard. Walsh again, that middle seems to be open. Nowatsky on the reception and Harold Lusk. And that should be the end of the first quarter. And it is. So the Utes take a ton, 10 nothing lead after one quarter. But after a Utah interception, that led to a field goal. Dan Pulse for 20 yards out, made it 3 nothing. Then big play for the offense. Curtis Marsh goes 57 yards on the pass from Mike McCoy. And that's where we stand now. Utes leading 10 to zip. And oddly enough, 
Utah is uh, only given up 10 points in the first quarter all season. And they've got 10 of them right here. Him to be one of the top two or three quarterbacks taken in the NFL draft, whether he decides to go this year or next. This is about the point on the field where they like to run the draw play to Hay Muller. Walsh will roll out, though. He's got his tight end short right there. Mealy. Uh, Mealy down to the eight-yard line. So the Cougars on the drive trying to get in the end zone now. That's a first down, so it'll be first and goal. The eight. Jamal hops down to the four-yard line. The trail is just Kurt Gunther by three points. Right now, BYU trailing 10-0. Walsh Lowe will go to the air. And just beyond, well, actually, the pass was well in front of Bryce Doman, Edwin Garrett on the coverage. Walsh hasn't really been sharp on the... Down here, it's tough to defend against a tight end. He's on the right side. Third and four for six points. He's looking for him. Down goes Wall. Sack Ernest Boyd. He was looking for the tight end going from right to left across the middle. Never had time and Boyd nailed him by the blitz off the corner. Atula Mealy, the man you were talking about, right. was in there. But Walsh just never had time. Ernest Boyd. The senior with six interceptions this year, 61 tackles. That, however, is his first sack. David Lauder, young man from Centerville and Beaumont High School, for 30 yards to get three points. And Lauder is perfect. So BYU gets on the scoreboard. After, uh, really a fine drive, though. The Utah. Deep Two yards. Alan Boardman, or excuse me, David Lauder's kickoff is away, and it's just going to be down in the end zone by Lawson. Interesting time of possession, too, in that first quarter. BYU had the ball almost twice as long. Well, they had that long drive, but Utah, of course, capitalizing on the turnover, scoring quickly. Capitalizing on the turnover and a long touchdown play for the, or a long play for the touchdown, which doesn't eat up that much time. Right now, the Utes could use. Draw play to Charlie. Nope. for the Cougars. Huge turnover. They've got the ball all the way down at the 18-yard line. It's number 46 who goes in and strips the ball away. Shades, Rick Muirbrook uh, stripped it, but wow, what a big turnover. And BYU trailing 10-3 with an opportunity to tie things up. Now let's see if Waltz tries to strike quickly. It's Nowatsky in motion. Changing the play now. Pass is complete to Nowatsky. Going for the end zone, and he's dragged down. First and goal. Walsh looking right. right. Looking right. Good coverage. Walsh is going to be forced out of bounds. Nate Kia. In on that, you see uh, Mark Rexford as well. And of course, Kareem Leary. But Nate Kia, nice to see him back and playing healthy. Good coverage. Walsh marks out the signal on second down and four. Walsh again to the air. Touchdown, Cougars. Tight end. Cougars within a point. Using the same play they used out in the middle of the field to get first down. Tight end just down three yards, sets up, waits for the ball. And we are tied up. And for John Walsh, 18 consecutive games with a touchdown pass. And he is even the score. At 
their goal line awaiting the kick of David Lauder. And Lawson, the freshman from Las Vegas, looking for some room. And a fine return by Lawson up to the 25. Finally knocked down there by Brian Hughes. University of Utah football brought to you in part by Bank One. Get a loan the easy way. Call Bank One's 30-minute loan by phone line. 1-800-352-LAND. There's the touchdown. And it's just a bullet. Tight end just sets up four yards downfield. One yard into the end zone. And Walsh drills it. After the turnover, 18 yards. Three plays. First and ten. Back come the Utes on offense. On their last possession, a fumble is what set up the BYU touchdown. McCoy dumps that pass off to Charlie Brown. Incomplete, and if Charlie had caught that, the fate that awaited him was not good. Would not have been a pretty sight. Linebacker right up on top. Second down and 10 now. Cougars showing the blitz. Charlie Brown comes up out of the tailback position. They back out of the blitz. McCoy going to be set. Wrapped up. McCoy goes down. It's Randy Brock. His seventh sack of the year. Quarter. Air Force must have left an awful lot on the field last week. Third down and 15. Big play here coming up. And again, the Cougars right on the line. Movement by the Utes. It'll be a five-yard penalty. Back to you, Dave. Third down and 20. The official on the far side, a side judge, blew the whistle, came in, and I'm not sure what it's about. Stop things. Now we're ready to go again. Looks like they hadn't started the play clock. About 20 yards to go on this play, third down. They're going to run a draw. Get nothing. Oh, man. It's John Ross right there. And Sharif had alluded to the youth self destructing, but when they beat Utah BYU in 1988, fumble. Utes got it. Nope. Well, the Utes had it, but it looks like Johnston got it back. He was lucky to get it back. Very fortunate for Mike Johnston. The important thing is he did get it back. Cougars will have the ball on the Utah side of the 50 when we come back. Long time they come in, they register, they go on a mission. He has yep. been here a long time. He was around for that 1988 ball game here in Rice Stadium. Walsh to throw. Finally gets the pass off nope. low. Do they give it to Doman? Doman says, I caught it. I caught it. The official tells the Skyline High School graduate. <laughs> that time, good coverage, though, on uh, a couple of the primary receivers for Walsh as he had to look away and, and ad lib a little bit. Second nice attack. Did some things that made rules necessary. Funny how that works. Yep. Second down and 10. Walsh audibleizing now. You showing some blitz and Walsh to the air again. The Cougars haven't had much success on the ground, so they go to the air. Doman, touchdown Cougars. A great throw by Walsh and what? And now the Cougars have quieted this crowd somewhat, leading 16 to 10, awaiting the point after, and they got it. And BYU jumps to a 17-10 lead. The lefty, David Lauder, gets the kick away, fielded by Cal Beck in his five-yard line. Here comes Cal. And Beck, a shoestring tackle at the 30-yard line. But Cal Beck, the youngster from Cottonwood High School, a fine return. So. The special teams have set up the offense with decent field position. Now they need to take their turn and deliver. Cal Buck does a good job of starting right up the middle, then finding the daylight, moving to it. 
and he's just that much away from breaking it for really long yardage. Mike McCoy brings out the troops. This offense needs to get rolling. gets around the corner for a couple. He'll get about five yards out of that particular carry, and that's excellent yardage on first down. Dan Ross in there to shut him down. Ross, number 50, the twin brother of John Ross, number 51. Claiborne are your receivers. Rick Tucker, the big tight end. Utes using a couple tight ends in this formation. and it works. Now, Just Tucker loaded was, it up. He was being covered by Stan Ross, and Ross loses that battle. I don't think Ross even thought the football was coming because he seemed to be right with him. Then all of a sudden, Tucker turns around, makes the grab, and Ross says, what's it doing here? Utah football, sponsored in part by Ken Garf. They back up every car they sell, and the running Utes, too. 17-10 to score, 8-10 to play here at the first half, Rice Stadium. It's the rivalry, the Cougars and the Utes. And Charlie, the Utes Brown. Charlie Brown has a hole. And Brown into the secondary, finally tackled by Jack DeMuni, but not before he picks up eight. And, and Jack DeMuni coming. from Hawaii has to make the tackle. And the Utes coming out in this series appearing to have a lot of spunk. They're coming off the ball with three. Should have the first down. Randy He's down Brockton. just outside the 30-yard line. Again, a good surge by that offensive line, taking the, uh, the line of scrimmage back. Here on this drive, as they move down to the 30-yard line of BYU, Hamilton in the backfield. McCoy, he's going, looking for Marsh, he but he'll run. just keep it. McCoy has room, and he'll slide down. They'll spot that at the 19. Again, the running ability of Mike McCoy picks up a first down. That may have been a designed play. McCoy never. McCoy. Haven't heard much from Durant Claiborne yet. There's the pass outside to Hamilton, and he is open out there. He'll pick up five yards. Shade on one side, and Rick Tucker on the other, and a second down of five for McCoy. There's Deron Claiborne, you mentioned it. Oh, he just can't hang on to it, but there's the first time they fired in the direction of Claiborne. It looks like it was... And it was there, it was hand. catchable. Nine yard line for a first. And then start looking end zone. Charlie Brown and Rob Hamilton in the backfield. Cougar showing blitz. Now he drops into the shotgun. Hamilton, again. He is wrapped up right around the ankles by Jack DeMuni again. And Hamilton's going to be a couple yards straight. Uh, you can go over and get the coach's face if you want, but it's a field goal attempt from Dan Pulsifer. Well, you know, all points are good points. Back to you, Dave. This will be a 28-yarder. So the sheriff not happy about this. Huge one, three points. I was talking with Dan Pulsford before the game, and he was tapping his foot right about at that spot to make sure the ground was solid. And it's good enough for three more. And probably the smart call by Coach Ron McBride. Fourth down and two is a big gamble. And you want to get the points out. There's a way. Atuaya in the end zone. He'll just down it there, so BYU will take over the 20-yard line, leading by four points. And again, they have that 17, which matches the total. The Utes have given up all year. Look at this guy. He's ready. He's ready. You know, he was yelling to put the camera on him. <laughs> yeah. Then all of a sudden, he became team. <laughs> now, BYU has scored on their last three possessions. 
Touchdown, touchdown, and field goal. And all of that in the second quarter. Here they come again. Walsh, the pass complete to Doman. Doman has become the favorite target of Walsh here in the last couple of drives anyway. Well, Walsh kind of picking on Edwin Garrett over on that corner. Doman, experienced receiver. It's not a bad place to go. Doman catches that when he knows he's going to get hit. He just makes himself as small as he can. You know, talk about making him small. I had him in the Fox Den last Sunday with Luther Ellis. And seeing those two sit next to each other, Ellis was just massive. And Doman looked at Ellis like, boy, I hope you don't get anywhere near me on Saturday. Reverse. Reverse. And Ellis Willis, almost had it. Willis had a uh, just about wrapped up by Luther Ellis. He ends up picking up a couple of yards, but that looked like it was going to be disaster for the Cougars before he picks up a few. Utah football brought to you in part by Southwest Airlines. The low fare airline is just plain smart. This is a good defensive play by Luther Ellis to slow him down, make him stay there until other tacklers can come around, limit the gain to three yards. Nate Kia finally mopped up. There's Luther Ellis. Second and seven. Balls to the air again, right over the middle, the big tight end, and that has been open all day long. This time it's Mealy. 61% completion rate. That'll get the job done. Look at that. It's all been in the air today for the Cougars, as you saw in that last graphic. Walsh again to throw in a little bit of trouble. In a lot of trouble. And Henry Kafusi takes him down, but credit the other youth linemen, including Bronzel Miller and Luther Ellis and Jeff Kafusi for at least getting Walsh into a little trouble back there before Henry could come up and finish him off. That's just good pressure. The, the push comes, first of all, from Walsh's left, and he tries to move to the right and then gets shut off there. And Bronzel gets over there, Kafusi gets there, and then it's Luther that puts the clincher on along with Jeff Kafusi. Henry. Henry Kafusi. There's Sorry. so many Kafusi. Kafusi, Kafusi. It's confusing. Second down and 13. Walsh again looking deeper this time to uh, Nowatsky. You know, he originally was looking at his tight end, Lewis, but Lewis fell down in the middle of the field this time, it's, as the defender did. And then he looked off and threw it to Nowatsky over his head. Nowatsky wanted an interference call, the official indicating immediately that you... Third down conversions, four of seven. They need 13 yards here. Almost over the head of Walsh, but being as tall as he is, he hauls it in. Going deep for the big tight end. And again, the Cougars' sideline is furious. They want to pass interference, but Ernest Boyd on the coverage, and it's not going to have... Take a look at the Cougars' sideline here. Bryce Dolman going crazy. Well, the official standing right there taking an awful lot out of that Cougar bench. Is there out on the field? There's Dolman. And really getting after him. It's a close <laughs> call, really close. He had an arm on it. I think that might, maybe that was the makeup. Yeah, and the official, the, last one. the mistake the official made is he reached for the flag and then put his hand back yeah. in. Couldn't find it. Well, you hate to think that officials have to do that kind of thing. But may have been two bad calls there. Curtis Marks standing at his 20 yard line. University of Utah football brought to you in part by TCI Cablevision. They're taking television into tomorrow. And there's the punt by Alan Boardman. Marsh at the 25. And he won't get much, just a couple. 34-yard punt. First and 10, Utes take over. And they'll put it on the ground with Charlie Brown. Charlie dancing around inside that hole. Picks up good yardage, finally dragged down. Jack DeMuty has to take him down again, but he picks up about seven. Good run by Charlie Brown, just great effort. This may be the hardest run of the day. Finds a little daylight there, steps out of a tackle, comes back to the right. And this is where DeMuni gets a hand on him, but can't put him down. Finally does, after a gain of seven. Boy, we've had to call DeMuni's number a couple times here. The money back's getting into that backfield. Brown again. And Quick Charlie hitter. finds room on the right side again. And again, a good pickup, another first down. Close to midfield, finally stopped by Jamie Cook. Right now, Charlie Brown and Rob Hamilton behind McCoy. Under two minutes to play in the first half. Utes trailing by four. McCoy looking to go up top. And he's going for Brown. Brown's got it, and he dropped the ball. Right in the breadbasket 
and it just fell out. Great throw by Mike McCoy. Charlie Brown just did not squeeze the football. It was there. This throw floats over the top of the defender. Oh, Charlie right Brown there. sees that man coming, takes his eyes off, and drops the football. Tough break for the Utes there. That was a huge pickup. Instead, it's a second and ten, and the ball remains at their own 48-yard line. 145 to go. Clock stopped with that last incomplete pass. One of the plays we have not seen is the laser screen. Notice that? That's right. A quick screen pass. of the blitz. McCoy going across the middle and he's got Evan Dyson. And Dyson, the freshman, still up, finally knocked him down at the 31-yard line. And there's the freshman. Had a great reception for a touchdown last week at Air Force and he helps the Utes out here. Did the smart thing. Come across the field, make the catch, get the first down, and get out of bounds. Good play by Kevin Dyson. He took a hit at the end, too. Oh, this turf is like cement out there today. Charlie Brown. And Brown fights for a couple of yards, so give him about three. Clock is running, under a minute and a half to play. And the Utes only have one timeout, so they need to move it along here. Hamilton goes out, and the Utes bring in another, bring Charlie Brown back in, and another tight end. You may see Dyson in the far corner right here. Marsh and Claiborne, the receivers to the left, Charlie Brown behind him. And McCoy is looking for the corner. He's got Marsh. And Marsh has the ball. They're going to keep the clock moving, though. Now they'll stop, they'll stop it for the first the change, yeah. But they, he does not get credit for going out of bounds. Was heading that way, but that's a fine throw as Marsh runs underneath Claiborne, who'd gone down into the corner. You just need to be ready. 53 seconds to go, and the clock's going to start moving as soon as they reset. There it goes. McCoy is still looking at the sideline for the play as the official is starting the clock. Taking all kinds of time. Boy, they really are. They really need to pick this up here a little. They've lost 14, 15 seconds off the clock. Going to the corner. Deron Claiborne. Touchdown, Utah. a flag thrown but it's against the Cougars the okay. touchdown will stand penalty is declined touchdown that'll warm things up a little bit 15 yard touchdown play and there's the corner pattern we've seen quite a bit this season usually to Curtis Marsh but that time the recipient is Devon Claiborne and now for the point after Dan Polster been perfect all year, going for yet another. And he got it. And the Utes take the lead back. Let's look at the touchdown again here as the fans are back on their feet. McCoy will drop straight back at good protection, pick up the blitz. He'll just hang it up, let Claiborne run to it. He's already beat the defender. That's six. James Higgins, the young man who was beat down in that corner, and that that end zone is really the last of the ice still remaining on this field. And talking to a couple of the receiver coaches before the game, they noted that you really can't make a cut when you're down there, but if you can just beat your man, there's no way he's going to be able to react. And it certainly worked out there for Claiborne. The flags are waving for the Utes, which took over. And it looks like he is content to just put the knee down and go into the locker room. Gonna let it run out. So the first half will come to a close with the Utes having gotten the lead back after losing it. And keep in mind they deferred, so they get the ball back to right. start the second half. And then their offense wasn't able to rebound from that. Clarence Lawson at his goal line. That kickoff sponsor by can Ken fly. Clark. They back up every car they sell, and the Utes too. And he is hit. He's and they've got it at the 20-yard line, and he fumbled the ball. The ball came loose, but I think he was already down. Spencer Reed laid him out. 
Let's go back down on the sideline now and see how the Utes are doing after their locker room chat. Sharif Shaw. Excitement. Nothing but intensity and excitement. I do not think the momentum will change throughout the second half. I think the Utes will remain strong and come out and try to establish a good drive here because this has been a crucial drive thus far to, the, to account for the two losses. So they'll do good. Back to you, Gabe. First and 10 for Mike McCoy at the 20-yard line. And it's Charlie Brown. And Charlie Brown finds daylight right up the middle, still on his feet. And a fine run for Charlie Brown. The running game is a key today. And the Utes are certainly trying to cash in. Stan Ross down there. And it looks like Patrick Mitchell also in on the hit. And Mitchell is still down. Mitchell ends up on the bottom of the pile with Charlie Brown coming right down on him. It's your Ford power run, folks. Take a look. Great lead block by Hamilton. Big hole from the offensive line. And then it's Charlie Brown. Gary's hanging on to the football. Now watch Mitchell. Wow. He gets everybody right on top of him here at the end. That big play sponsored by your local Ford dealers. Charlie Brown having a fine afternoon here. And why, you know, we should say that while BYU's running game hasn't worked at all, their passing game has been working almost flawlessly. So they, you know, do have 17 points to show for that. Utah leading by just three. It's two, two tight ends split out, three wide receivers. A lot of weapons for Mike McCoy as he drops back to throw. He's got time. Got to throw it. He had some time, but you can't stand back there nope. forever. Good coverage downfield, quite obviously, and McCoy could not get what he wanted. Appeared to be looking for his tight end, who was covered. <laughs> So he did the smart thing, pull it down. He ends up uh, losing a couple of yards on that. It'll be second down and 12. BYU's defense has been yielding 136 yards a game against the pass in Utah, averaging about 281. Throws it out to his tight end, and Jari's cannot hang on to it. Jari's making a diving attempt. The throw by McCoy was in the right place. And an excellent job that time by Charlie Brown of picking up the blitzing linebacker. Made a good block up the middle. Here's the quarterback numbers as you look at the two of them. And John Walsh has thrown quite a few more passes. Had the one interception. I'm not sure it was entirely his fault. Went right through the hands of his yeah. receiver. I think it's pretty even, really. Well, right now, Mike McCoy needs 11 yards. And we talked about how crucial this first drive of the third quarter is. And keep it going. They've got to deliver here. Four receivers and Charlie Brown behind McCoy. Steps up. Has a receiver, but it's going to be about a yard shy. It's Kevin Dyson. Maybe a couple of Maybe yards, couple shy. Of yards yeah. shy. So the Utes are going to have to punt it away. Had to throw it, I think, a little bit before he wanted to because of pressure. It was a stunning and twisting Cougar defensive line that put the pressure on it. Well, that's not good news for Utah, but the BYU defense, credit them, they have held. I think the, the first down play on this last set is uh, probably the one that really hurt McCoy standing in there and yeah, had to take the loss took the loss Jason Jones at the 44 yard line oh and that one went off he missed that one badly that should be about yeah. an eight, eight yard punt I think it won't be much not at all Jones does not like it and BYU is going to end up with terrific field position. Well, that went out at the own BYU 36-yard line. It's a six-yard punt. I'm sorry, I missed it by two. Oh, Jason, goodness. He knew it as soon as he hit it, too. You see Sean McNabb, the special teams coach there, talking to him. I think you see John Walsh come out and go right after the youth. University of Utah football sponsored in part by R.C. Willey, Utah's biggest and one of America's finest home furnishing stores. And here comes John Walsh. And they'll keep it on the ground. And a fine running play by Jamal Willis. And you haven't seen much of that at all today. But right there, they get a little bit of a hole. And Willis picks up a little over five yards. It was James Johnson who pulling guard pulled left and came right who 
leads this play and makes a fine job. And this, this is the shake. Look at the rail. Yes. Oh, he knew. He knows. No question. You think he's getting any sympathy oh. from 98? <laughs> I don't think so. Second down and four. Hey, Mooley. Hey, Mooley with plenty of room. He's got the first down and about eight more. He's all the way down to the 45-yard line before Harold Lusk and Jeff Kirkman can bring him down. There we said at the first of the game, Cougars run to establish the pass. This is a play that they did not have success with in the first half. Here they do. It's a counter. Emma Haymouli from Provo. Of course, the brother Locke played for the Cougars from 1983 to 86. Played a couple years in the NFL. There goes Jamal Willis again. <laughs> Three straight one running plays over the right side of that line behind Evan Pilgrim and Eli Herring, and they've all worked well. Those two are a load anytime they come at you. What, three, 300 and 335? You have a guard pulling, a tackle pulling from the offside, leading through the hole. A lot of room for Willis to run. Jamal Willis over 1,000 yards rushing coming into this game on the season. Same play. This time it's Mark Atuaya. He gets a couple. He'll dance for about three. But it's first down. John Walsh has come out and just kept it on the ground. And we, you saw the statistics at halftime. They hadn't run the ball at all. Minus seven. And I think that's Boy. something they pointed up probably with the offensive line. Said, hey, guys, we can't run unless you block. And they're coming out here and blocking very well. Mark Atuaya is little brother Donnie. State football championship. Jordan will brought you that game on Thursday. He's a good little running back. Walsh to throw this time. His tight end's wide open. He misses him and goes to the other tight end. Two tight ends on this set. And Garrett just knocked over by Atula Mealy, who picks up a couple more, but he had two tight ends in that set. Both Lewis and Mealy were wide open, and he elected to go to Mealy. Well, Mealy just stayed on the line of scrimmage, then drifted left. He's the outlet man, and Walsh looked downfield and then finds Mealy over here. And watch how much room he's got to roam. People are downfield covering wide receivers. Now, here's a collision that is lost by Garrett. Oh, and, event that, and eventually, Mealy will lose. He'll go down, but it takes five or six. Atula Mealy, 210-pounder. Edwin Garrett, 170. See the run set up the pass, opened everything up. First and ten. Here comes the blitz. It's picked up. Quick pass outside to Atuaya. He picks up a few more. The Cougars can get a first down at the two. You saw Lusk at the end of that play. How to make the hit. And right now, it's the Cougar offensive line that's really taking charge of it. Doing a good job of blocking both the run and the pass at this point. Seven and a half yards from the end zone, trailing 20 to 17. BYU trying to regain the lead. John Walsh changing up the play. Huge showing blitz. It's picked up. Walsh has nowhere to go. Though. Finally throws it to the end zone. Touchdown, Cougars. Eight yards for Tim Nowatsky. Nowatsky out on the left side, just drifted over the middle. Walsh did a great job of looking way out left corner and then coming back to the right side after Nowatsky had come clear across the end zone. And great protection, too. You talked about the line. He stood in there for Long quite time. a while. Yeah. And the Utes were trying to put it, but that's an impressive drive after the short punt. Very impressive. David Lauder for the extra point. And the young man from Beaumont High School nails it. And now the Cougars have regained the lead 24 to 20. And we'll be back. Well, 
BYU has taken the lead back in this seesaw game. 24-20 the score. And you saw the Utah offense stymied on their last drive. And it's, it's been a pattern, a pattern you don't like to see, but that's been the pattern. Let's go down on the field uh, right after this kickoff. Uh, we'll talk to Sharif Shaw about that. First of all, the kick. David Lauder. And Clarence Lawson will just drop a knee in the end zone. And Sharif, you know, this, the offense had this problem in the second half. What, why can't they deal with this? I'll tell you, I don't know. It's uh, Each team they played, both defenses have come out and made changes that have caused problems throughout the offense. And so if it's been the lack of, you know, making the counter change to become productive or the inability to recognize the change itself, but whatever it is, it has to be rectified quickly because offense has to become productive on this drive. Back to you, Dave. Well, here they go. First and 10 from the 20-yard line. Charlie Brown in the backfield behind McCoy's got two tight ends and two wide receivers. We've seen a lot of this double tight end set today. And Brown wrapped up and dropped. Shane Muirbrook. Does a remarkable job of getting four yards out of the play before Muirbrook can haul him down. This is mostly Charlie Brown on this one. Gets right through the hole there with a pretty good block, and then he and Muirbrook one on one here before Charlie finally goes down. They do give him four. It's a second and six. Same formation. McCoy is running, keeping it. And he gets the first down, and there's a flag down. Perhaps could there be a late hit there? I don't know if it's a late hit. It may be a hold out on that side. It could be almost anything over there. Well, the Utes are applauding. Calling it against the Cougars. Yep. There's Mike McCoy coming back. He appears to be all right. Referee coming over. During the run, holding. Yep. On the defense, 10 yards, tacked on to the end of the run, first that's, down. That's holding up the man in front of him trying to make the block. He's hanging on to the shirt or something so he can't get on downfield. End result, you get 10 more yards and it puts him up at the 40. That's a strange call, but it's you one that is that made occasionally. Both the uh, WAC commissioner, Carl Benson, and the uh, my assistant are here today checking out the teams and uh, maybe even the refs. Charlie Brown goes around the left side and Brown good yardage six yards for a first down or not a first down but within four yards of another first down. Blue Cross and Blue Shield of Utah is a proud sponsor of University of Utah football. Blue Cross and Blue Shield the company of choice and again Muirbrook called his name a lot in on the end of this play. Charlie step started straight ahead, saw it was plugged up, skids to the outside. Muirbrook follows him over, makes the stop. Corey but Cook. it's a good first down game. Corey Cook as well. Second and four. I inadvertently said first down. It's second and four. They're approaching midfield. Utes trying to keep this drive going. And McCoy will drop into the shotgun, leaving him with five targets. Charlie Brown moves out of flanker at the bottom of the screen. Pass is complete at the midfield. Deron Claiborne has the first down. He'll get about a yard more. Again, number 46. He comes over, comes underneath the linebackers. He knows he's going to get hit. But he makes the reception, gets the first down. Watch the three receivers at the top. Claiborne comes underneath. Those are linebackers, folks. All of them waiting right there for him. Ron Claiborne from San Diego playing in his final regular season game for the Utes. McCoy again, a short pass over the middle. There's a flag down right near that heap. One of the uh, Cougars picks it up. The ref says, put that back down. Now, I'm guessing one of two things. Either a hold downfield. There it is. Another hold on the Cougars. Yeah, and the defensive secondary. As a receiver goes by, they're hanging on to him. You can see that one from clear up here. So the Utes benefiting from some of the Cougar mistakes here. 
You can make contact with the man for five yards, but you cannot hold it. You can't hang on to it. And if this, this is a case the receiver was going by, and the defender still had his arm out and hold of it. Well, the Cougar sideline doesn't like that. Two holding calls on the defense on this drive, and now the Utes have the ball all the way down to the 37-yard line. It's almost like the hand check in pro basketball now. Can't do that. Boy, they have really tightened that up. Eight and a half to play. BYU leading the Utes by four. Charlie Brown tries the right side and doesn't get much. That collapsed in a hurry. John Ross had his hands on him to start with, and then the rest of the crew arrived. Charlie managed to run right by John Ross, picked up almost three yards on the carry. Well, two and a half. Get him two on the play. Second and eight job. They That's give him right. two. So it's a second down and eight. Charlie really been the workhorse. We thought we might see Juan Johnson today. They figured he might be back, but haven't seen him in the game yet. McCoy rolling out. He's got a tight end. He's got to run it. Good coverage on his tight end. That's exactly who he was looking for. Was number 82. Chris Jarries was Chris rolling Jarry's. along with him. But there was good coverage out there as the linebacker on that side fell off with Jarry's and McCoy had no place to throw the football. So here's a big third down. Huge third down, a third and seven on their last drive. The Utes ended the drive on a third and 11 when they came up short. Now they need seven yards. Ball is at the 34, Utah trailing by four, trying to get out of those, the third quarter offensive doldrums that they've suffered the last couple of weeks. Cougars showing blitz. Charlie Brown steps up. It's a straight. It is a blitz. McCoy goes down, and the Cougars have held again. Making the sack for the Cougars is Randy Brock, a defensive end. The minute McCoy stepped forward, Brock is able to reverse on his blocker. Watch Chris Ray doing a pretty good job on him out here. But when McCoy starts up, that turns Brock loose because Ray is blocking the other way. How about a 52-yard field goal attempt? This would be a long one for Dan Polsford. He has not hit one over 50 yards yet. You got 11, live ball, live ball. He hadn't hit one yet either. No, this one's well short. Very similar pattern to what we've seen here. Missed field goals and the offense Whoa. just can't get it going. Once again, we are looking We'll be right for back Monique after this for Southwest Airlines, Monique the Low Fair Airlines. Please come to the press box immediately. The real McCoy against John Walsh. Right now, John Walsh has his offense back on the field as McCoy and the Utes have not been able to get this offense going here. Look at the rushing. Fumble. Fumble. It's picked up by the big lineman, Jim Edwards. The center, Jim Edwards, and he's not a running back. No, and that's not a plan to fumble risky, folks. No. Not nearly. Walsh was looking for the football. Edwards found it. The exchange was never made. But you know, you know what this guy's thinking right now? He's loving this. Look at that. He is loving it. <laughs> he gets to play running back. He's trying to make some substitutions before the Cougars. Actually, he gained a yard on that play. So give one yard, uh, positive yardage to the center, Jim Edwards. Second and nine, Walsh to the air. They've had great success here. But this time, Ernest Boyd is there to make the hit on Chad Lewis. Lewis has one touchdown reception already in this game, but the Utes hold him just a couple of yards there. There you see Walsh going back and right in the middle. See the double team on Luther Ellis? It's been going on all year. And he's still a force to be reckoned with. Well, and it certainly opens things up. Luther Ellis is probably one of the reasons that Bronzel Miller leads the whack in sacks. Or Capusi has yeah. such good good play, both of them. Third down and five, big play for the Cougar offense and the U defense. Out of the shotgun. Walsh overthrows Doman. And now the U defense has held. Good 
not often you see John Walsh go back into the shotgun. In this case, here's Luther. Luther is coming right straight up the pipe. That's a single block, and he forces, he actually forced Walsh to pull that ball a little bit. Going against Evan Pilgrim, Luther Elks. Curtis Marsh standing at the 19-yard line, awaiting the punt of Alan Boardman. Utes look to be coming after it. They are. They'll never get there. Another great Cougar bounce. Boardman's done this a couple times today. Picked up about, what, eight yards after the ball landed. A 44-yard kick overall. So once again, the Ute offense takes to the field. They've had the ball twice here in this third quarter and haven't been able to score. But they're working on it with 5.14 to play in the third. BYU trainers applying a little extra tape to the feet of Jamal Willis. His team leading now 24 to 20. And Mike McCoy brings out the Utes once again, trying to get this offense moving here in the third quarter with 5.14 to play in the third. And McCoy to the air. Wide open as Charlie Brown. He didn't even see the ball coming. Had no idea the ball was coming, and the sun may have been right in his face, but he turned once when the ball was in the air and then turned back and just kept running. I don't think he knew that McCoy had thrown the football. He looked back once and then turned his head and kept right on going. He never saw the football that, at all. That could have been very dangerous if the defender Ooh. had seen that. Well, Patrick Mitchell was fortunately going with Charlie Brown, not looking back at the football early on. Charlie Brown comes out there asking him on the sideline, what happened on the play? Charlie's saying, I couldn't see it for the sun. <laughs> happened a couple times last week at Air Force, yep. so getting the eyes Same of people. Same side of the field. McCoy to throw again. He's got his Looking tight for end. his tight end. That's no interference. Tucker had it. No interference. No call. Good defense on the part of Stan Ross. Now watch, watch the play. He's got his hand up before the ball gets there. Right there. That's interference, folks. No call. No call. And two officials, both of them on the Cougar sideline, didn't make the call. Now the Utes have a third and ten, and they're all the way back to their 15-yard line. A very crucial third down play. Now there's one other thing. You've got the extra defensive backs in. You cannot afford to throw an interception down here. Cougar's showing some blitz. Straight rush. McCoy's pass is complete to Hamilton. Will he have the first? Yes. And Rob Hamilton coming out of the backfield comes up with a big play for Utah before Shane Yearbrook can bring him down. That's just a superb effort by Hamilton. McCoy steps up to avoid the rush, finds him, and then Hamilton makes the good catch and runs right over a Cougar defender to get the first down. University of Utah football brought to you in part by your local Ford dealer. See the new 1995 lineup at your Ford dealer today. First and 10, Utes keep the drive alive. And now they keep it on the ground. Charlie Brown picks up five quick ones before he runs into Stan Ross. Number 50, Stan Ross, his brother. Number 51, John. You know, they're twins, Stan and John, and yet John weighs 30 pounds more. And yet they're twins. I mean, you got to be at the dinner table first. I, that must be it. Stan's actually five minutes older than John. <laughs> that explains a, it. <laughs> <laughs> He's been early for everything. They're not identical twins. Charlie Brown in the backfield, along with Rob Hamilton. Second down five. Straight Boy drop. In the air. Nowhere to go. Down goes Mike McCoy. Mike Ulafali with the sack. Big play by Ulafali. That takes about 10 yards more that the Utes are going to have to pick up. Well, they had a second and five, and now and this they're is a have... biggie, a third and a ton. Yep, third and 13. The look on Ulafali's face. He was happy with that one. Five sacks coming into this game. Now the Utes need 13 yards. 
to keep this drive alive. And the Cougar defensive backs are backing off and covering at 13 yards back. Pressure. Charlie, Charlie Brown, Brown got a lot of work to do. He won't make it. Not even close. There's a flag where Mike McCoy went down. Face, Face mask. mask. Against the Utes. Against the Utes. I suspect they'll decline it. Wow. That was a third down play. Someone trying to block for McCoy grabbed a hold of a face mask to try and help him out. They're going to take the penalty. Cougar is saying, let's take the penalty, force him back further. That puts him back inside the 10 yard face line. The nine. Against the offense, that's a half the distance penalty, still third down. So they get a third down, but they're a lot farther back. So the Cougar coaches gambling that they'll be able to hold him here and really get him in trouble. They only There's stepped off man. five yards. Well, they had to go half the distance to the goal line because of the length of that penalty. Anthony Brown, the culprit. So it's a third down and 27. You just need to get all the way up to the 36-yard line, and they have the ball at the nine. And one down to get it there. Charlie Brown, the Utes keep it on the ground. Charlie does as much as he can. He gets 11 yards out of it. Simply had too far to go. Trying to give Jason Jones a little room to punt, and he needs a good one right here. Well, as you say, uh, I suppose we're really hoping you could bust some and perhaps get the first down, but the primary thing is to get more room for your punter. And Jason Jones is standing at the six-yard line. He had that one punt go off his foot. He needs a good one here. He got, he got it. it. Johnston back to his 30. Gets out of one tackle. There's a flag down. Two flags, two flags down. down. Johnston still up. He finally goes down, but there's two flags. A 50-yard punt for Jason Jones. So a fine kick, and now we'll sort this out. The illegal block in the back is one of them. On the Cougars. Or it could be both of them, really. Well, the referee's asking, now what's this one for? In which place do you want me to park it off from? Here's the reception. Watch to the left of the screen. Right there. He was pushing. Pushing a man from behind. Well, that'll put the Cougars back to their 24-yard line where they'll take over there. Leading by four points, a minute 55 to play here in the third. And BYU's defense has held the Utes three times in this third quarter. John Walsh. Hey, Mooley. He'll dance for a couple. That's that same counterplay that worked so well for about 20 earlier Gosh, in the period. It's time the Utes read it better and make the stop. He really only gets about a yard on that, so it wasn't very well read. Mark Rexford, the leading tackler on this team. Rexford's just been busy all year. Had he? He's just been a good, steady, reliable middle linebacker. That's what he's been. Look at Luther Ellis. He's right in the middle of that line, imploring these fans to get going. Trying to get everybody into the game. This is just my last game in front of you people. I want to win it. Walsh looking to throw. He's Receivers are well covered. Luther was right there. Ran into his own man, but dumps it off to Mealy. And what great ad-libbing on the part of Walsh. And Luther Ellis has got to be a little frustrated with that. He was right there, had appeared to have Walsh wrapped up, but what a great presence of mind for John Walsh. Watch this play. This is an amazing piece of work by John Walsh. There's Luther Ellis, double team. Now he shakes his blocker. Probably a little too excited here. Gets a hold of Walsh and then loses him. Walsh runs into his own man, Pilgrim, and has, Pilgrim. Or, has just enough to get the ball upfield to his tight end. Amazing thing is,
that no lineman was downfield. Incredible play for the BYU offense. Walsh to the air again, fakes deep. Play is broken up by Kareem Leary, intended for Bryce Doman. Larry with a marvelous move coming back, and he and Doman saying nice job to each other right there. Mutual respect. That's been a fun little battle to watch over there. 37 seconds to play in this third quarter. BYU still holding on to that four-point lead. It was 20-17 to 17 at halftime, and the Cougars scored on their first possession. It's been another third quarter to forget as far as the new offense is concerned. Kafusi, the first man there. Credit Luther Ellis. Luther took two blockers with him. Kafusi able to slip from his right and beat his man. Now, Ellis is double team. Kafusi starts to get through. Miller gets pressure on him, forces him out. Kafusi runs him down. <laughs> That's just good work by a defensive line. All three of those guys, Kafusi, Ellis, and Miller, ended up on top of each other after Walsh had gone down. Third and 17. And that's going to be the end of the quarter. So when we come back, the final period in the rivalry. BYU leads it by four. Selling hot dogs. Did you like one? Nice and hot. <laughs> got plenty of them. Hot dog. Do you deliver? Good product. Just got them. Only $2. <laughs> Two bucks for a dog, folks. We're into the final period here. The Utes and the Cougars. Which only goes to prove that all of the hot dogs are not on the buns. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of hot dogs, Sharif. Dave, this defense of this last quarter will be a big quarter for the Utes. Defense has been going well. Even though we've had the same unproductive, you know, uh, ability from the offense, I think defense will continue to come up and make some big plays, and offense will finally get it started. They have been traditionally pretty strong in the fourth quarter, and I think they'll do it again. Back to you. On the Big Mac scoring recap in that third quarter, we had one score, Tim Nowatsky, eight-yard pass from Walsh, and that was after a fine drive, put BYU up 24 to 20. Other than that, it was pretty much a defensive struggle. So we'll start up and go into the final period with the Cougars leading it by four. And what has really been a wild game back and forth, taking turns with the lead. It's all come down to the final period. This is a big third down play for the Cougars. Third and 17. Walsh will back off into the shotgun. And the Utes up to the line. Fires the pass, broken up by Kareem Leary. It was in the hands of Tim Nowatsky, but credit number four for providing the hit. Do you know, I don't think either one of those people knew where the ball was. Leary broke the pass up with his head. He knew it was coming that way. But watch this. Leary will come around, and the ball will hit him right in the helmet. Right there. It does hit him right in the hat. Hit him right in the hat. So the defenses continue to shine here. And Curtis Marsh is standing at his 20-yard line, awaiting the punt of Alan Boardman. And the Utes are all up on the line. Now they're dropping out of it, setting up the return. They still almost got there. Marsh takes it at 20. Good return for Curtis. He's only been averaging about three yards per return on those, but this time he puts the Utes up to the 36-yard line. So Utah's offense will come back out, and the BYU defense has shut them down in this second half. The Utes had 20 points at halftime. They have not scored since. And the Utes with decent field position can use all of their offense in this particular segment right now. All they've got to do is go to it. Little. 
50, Stan Ross. And Shane oh, Muirbrook, again. Shane Muirbrook. Muirbrook's always there. The Ross twins got there and helped stop Charlie. The little one got there first. The little 255 pounder. And Albrecht, one linebacker, comes out, an extra defensive back goes in for the Cougars. Second down and eight. McCoy's got two tight ends and two wide receivers along with Charlie Brown looking to go up top. Fires to a wide open Curtis Marsh at midfield, and Marsh will get all the way down to the 43 yard line. Shane Muirbrook again on the coverage. Why they brings him down. And boy, uh, Marsh certainly found the open part of the field. Twenty-yard pickup for Curtis Marsh, and look how open he is in the middle of this. Nobody covering Curtis Marsh. First and ten. Utes moving with the ball. The BYU 42-yard line. get a couple started out with about a two and a half yard gain and again right there in the middle is number 47 Scott Albrecht linebacker making a stop this time and an extra defensive back in Albrecht comes out give you a look from the RC Willie best seat in the house Mike McCoy surveying the defense gives the ball to Charlie Brown the angle from the R.C. Willie. Best seat in the house. Four receivers set here for McCoy as he makes some changes on the play. He's changed the play, too. Blitz is coming. Got his man. It's Jamil Williams, and Williams has a first down. That's his first reception of the day. James Higgins on the coverage, and as you said, the blitz was coming. McCoy had to get rid of that ball in a hurry. Had to get rid of it in a hurry. Williams was there, made a nice catch. First down, Utes at the Cougar 30. But Williams is mad about he didn't keep his feet. Can't keep running. He bangs the football on the dirt. You don't get enough receptions to uh, not be able to take fully advantage of him, I guess. But it was an important one because it's a first down. Looking to go up top again. Dumps this one off. Turned the corner. And Brown does get around the corner. Jack DeMooney finally knocks him down, but that's another first down for the Utes. They're inside the 20 yard line. That time, Charlie took the little swing pass and just outruns Scott Albrecht, linebacker out here. There's Albrecht. Turns the corner on Albrecht and brings it on upfield for first down yardage. Here's Charlie. What a, what a year he's had since San Diego State. Been huh? a great year since then. He's had three 100-yard-plus uh, rushing games. He's got to be somewhere around there today. He ought to be getting close to that. 88 yards for Charlie so far. Give him a few more right there. Charlie Brown runs into Stan Ross. There behind the block of Chris Ray. Ute football sponsored in part by Ken Garf. They back up every car they sell, and the Utes, too. Utes bring an extra tight end in, take the running back out. Whoops, bring the running back back in, along with the extra tight end. 92 yards for Charlie Brown. Charlie goes out across the way. Passes 100, which he should. That would be four straight games of over 100 yards rushing for Charlie. Right now it's Rob Hamilton in the backfield. Second and four. Hamilton. Hamilton hit right at the line by Muirbrook. He'll get a couple of yards. Oh, my goodness. Lance Scott just came out of that pile and threw his helmet. And he has broken the helmet, the face mask, or something, and I'm not sure what that's all about. Well, there's the helmet. Lance Scott's over on the sideline right now. And he's mad about something. If he came out of that pile and he just threw his helmet. That's uh, Robert Wiscombe's the equipment manager. There are not enough youth players on the field right now to run a play, and a referee is starting to wind the clock. Now you'll stop it. Well, McCoy just... Uh, it looked like he was signaling for a timeout, but... 
that won't be the case. So Lance Scott is off the field for some uh, equipment repair. Apparently something's wrong with his helmet. He's talking there to the coaches. They're trying to calm him down, but he just chucked that thing. And now McCoy finally does take the timeout. Really had no choice. That's an amazing sequence. I'm not sure what it's all about, but Scott appears to have someone tending a cut on his chin like somebody did something to him that he did not like at all. Oh, man, he was mad. We'll be back to sort this out. Ever wonder what coaches talk about on those silly phones? That's L-A, capital V-E-L-L. -L. Hello, Bank One. L-A, capital V-E-L-L. -L. Sure, it's a steady job. <clears throat> I think. Lavelle. It rhymes with Lavelle. You can call Bank One's 30-minute loan by phone <clears throat> from home or wherever you happen to work. Hold it down. I'm trying to get a loan here. For home equity loans, just call. Take a look inside the circle here. You'll see what happened to Lance Scott. It looks like his own teammate hit Yeah, him. watch this. The helmet goes in there, knocks him backwards. Then it's loose. He gets jarred there, and then he gets this at the tail end of it. <laughs> Greg gets a little elbow there. You want to play offensive center sometime? Well, Lance, wow. Lance is back into the game. There he is, number yep. 56, right He's in the center. So the helmet's been repaired. It's and a Mike third McCoy, Third and two. Oh, no. terrible. Ball on the ball. McCoy got it back, I think. What a disastrous play. The well, Utes looked totally confused on the play, and, and there was nothing good in that at all. Disastrous. Let's go down on the field to Sharif. I tell you what, he was, Lance Scott was so upset just now because he had asked the equipment manager earlier to fix his chin strap. And if you guys saw the replay there at TV, in TV land, he took a bad shot and cut his chin. So it enraged him. He threw his helmet, and now they, uh, they were just trying to get an audible in. Lance Scott thought it was a snap, snapped the ball, and it was a big, almost 25-yard loss. Back to you, Dave. Huge, huge loss. And now again, the Utes are late getting people on the field once again. Can't believe this. Can't just, believe just an this. absolute mess right now. Count the players. Looks like there's 12 of them. Looks like there's 12 of them out there to me. They are, there is, and the officials counting them as well. What they're trying to do is get BYU to jump off sides here. We're just waiting. Now you better count your people. There were 12 people out there, David. Yep, there were. Delay of game prior to the snap against the offense, five yards, still fourth down. Well, you've just seen a complete collapse of the last couple of plays. Utes had the ball all the way down inside the 20-yard uh, line. And just disaster ever since the, I guess we could call it the now uh, famous helmet strap incident. The chin strap incident, yeah. Astounding. Oh, man. You're down there where you got a chip shot at least for three points. Now you've got to punt the football. Jason Jones from the 49-yard line of Utah. That's into the end zone. Oh, well, Utah might go back. They do. Look at that. At the one-foot line. Well, they put it at the one. I didn't think he'd get it and get stopped. Well, you got something rosy out of that. Yep. Oh, Neil, that is something else. 35-yard punt, but... The sequence man. of events before that. The chin strap, okay. Then the total confusion on the next play. And then coming out, and you end up with a formation you've never seen before. And then the bad snap. It's a sequence that's just unbelievable. Well, BYU is backed up. They take the ball at about the one yard. Well, it's at the two. And the U defense trying to get fired up. Here comes John Walsh and the Cougars. Hey, Mooley. Hey, Mooley stacked up. We'll get maybe two yards. 
That'll get him a little more breathing room out to the four. Got about nine minutes, nine minutes, ten seconds left to go in this football game. Cougars still up by four. There's Luther Ellis. I think that shirt hasn't seen a little battle today. Luther wants this game so bad. Second down and eight. Walsh said Dolan wasn't even looking. Walsh had to get rid of it. That's a total misread by one or the other. Doman is doing a fly pattern, and out and up. Walsh is throwing the out. Look at Luther Ellis on the field, trying to get everyone going, and they're responding. Nukes bring an extra defensive back in. On this third down, it's about eight yards, and you better look out for the tight ends here. There's Luther. You think he's the leader? Third and eight. Gets away again. Dumps it off, but they'll be well short, and the Utah defense has responded. Ernest Boyd was there. Bonnie well, Fafita was the running back who hauled it in, and now the Utes have forced the punt. And they've got a man backed up right against the back edge of the end zone. If you don't go after the block here, you never should. University of Utah football brought to you in part by Bank One. Get along the easy way with Bank One's 30-minute loan by phone line. 1-800-352-LEND. And it's Alan Boardman at the back of the end zone. Now, did there was a Utah player stepped across. Did he make contact or did he get back? Because then the offensive lineman for the Cougars pulled up. So let's see what the call is. It was Clarence Lawson who jumped there. It's just a matter of which way it goes. It's going to go in favor of the Cougars. So that'll help out Borden. By rule, there is no foul oh, on no the play. Foul. Still fourth down. What were the Cougars all cheering about? I don't know. Maybe it's because they didn't get penalized. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Lawson is the happiest guy down there. Look at him go now. He's like, yeah. Oh, I didn't do anything wrong. All I did was jump a little. Look at him. Coaches here just love him. Just a freshman. Boardman. A line drive kick. Utah have great field position. Curtis Marsh. Still up. And Marsh gets down inside the 20 yard line. So the disastrous possession you saw last time. Now there's going to be a personal foul against BYU right here. Number 71 got blocked, got up, walked back, and kicked the Utah player in the head. That's Boris Unatoa. Flags went up immediately. Dead ball, personal foul, BYU. As I was starting to say, the, the Utes now get the ball back about the same spot that they really lost it on the last possession. Let's go back down to Sharif Shaw. Sharif, if you look at uh, Curtis Marsh here on the return. Watch the end of the play. It'll be to the top of the screen. Right there, now that, you can't see it. Let's go down to Sharif. Dave, you are witnessing a momentum shift right now as we speak. There was a big mistake. There was a lot of mistakes made on the last drive, but Utah has a chance now to make them all up and take us in for six. Con concentration, execution, and consistency. Back to you, Dave. But not before the Utes pick up yardage. Charlie Brown trying to spring it right up the middle again. He gets about one. Cougars bring a linebacker out, defensive back in on second down. There's actually no gain on the play. Yeah, apparently not. Utah football brought to you part by Southwest Airlines with low fares on every seat of every flight. The Lothar airline is just plain smart. Second down and eight. I should say second and goal. Charlie Brown. And Brown 
gets down close to the five yard line. And came very close to breaking that one. Excellent block by Scott, the center. You want to know how the tension is getting? Shea Muirbrook trying to get past that block ends up with Charlie Horses in both legs, has to stretch himself out after this play. It's getting tough. Well, I'll bet it's getting cold down there, too. The shade starting to set in. Third down and goal. Utes need to score here because they cannot get a first down. Right, they shift into the Anaheim. No, they don't shift into nope. the Anaheim. It looked like it was headed that way, but they've spread it out. They just shifted people both ways, made the Cougars shift their defense totally. McCoy to throw. It's going to be a touchdown to Deron Claiborne. It Touchdown pass to Deron Claiborne, his fourth of the season for the WAC's second leading receiver. And the Utes have regained the lead. And now Dan Pulsifer. And he got it. 6.15 to play in the ball game. And in the rivalry, the Utes are leading it by three. 7-24. Utah leads now. And this kickoff sponsored by Ken Garth, where they back up every car they sell and the Utes. Dan Polsfer trying to get the crowd going, and they are pumped up. Utes really turned things around after a disastrous drive that ended with that punt. After the Cougars were pinned, the Utes came back and scored. And now the Cougars take over. Trying to find somewhere to run, but not been doing it for Jason Cooper, and BYU will take over at the 19-yard line. Let's go back to the touchdown and take a good look at uh, Deron Claiborne, who hauled in his third reception of the game, and this one for a TD. Now, this is after a shift has occurred. He's wide open. Wide open, and there are two Cougar defenders covering one man out here on the right. Pretty isolation on Claiborne. Six minutes to play, and BYU trailing now 27-24. Walsh back to pass, batted down. And it's batted at the last scrimmage, and Luther Ellis is jumping up and down saying, let's go, guys, I need this. Watch this, Walsh rifles. Bingo, the big guy right in the middle. Up and just rattles it down. BYU naturally needs to throw the ball now. Their running game has been non-existent. They had 20 yards rushing in this entire game. Their previous low was 60 against Colorado State, but the Utes have shut down that running game. And now John Walsh trying to rally his troops. He's going to have to run hard and get popped. Oh, what a collision. Walsh really wanted that first down. I think I'd have, uh, I'll be honest with you, I'd have slid. <laughs> really took a hit and comes out of that old boy. Walsh is a pretty big kid, and it was Garrett not quite the same size, and Walsh popped him pretty good, but I'm sure he felt the hit. I don't think there's any question about that. Six foot four, 215 pounder, John Walsh, and he didn't have any of the uh, thermal underwear on. Look at that, the sleeves are rolled up. He didn't care how cold it is. Now, part of the running game lack for the Cougars, as you look at John Walsh, is the fact that Jamal Willis has played very little here in the second half. He hasn't been in a ball game, I, I think, since the first series. Saw some of the scores there on the Smith scoreboard. Air Force came to within 12 points of Notre Dame. First and 10. Drop play. And Mooley gets past one Ute, Rexford, and is finally wrapped up. After a gain of five, Jeff Kirkman was there. Kirkman, Stapley, Garrett, as the youth swarmed to the football. But a good game for Hamula. 5.38 to play. What a finish here, folks. Utah leading 27-24. Utes bring in Marcus Woods. 
and takes Stapley out. Woods will play both linebacker and the pizza back in this set. Walsh to throw again. Plenty of time, has all kinds of time, and gets it to Hay Mooley. There's another Cougar first down, and Hay Mooley up near midfield before Jeff Kirkman stops him. Utes came with a blitz with Woods from the outside. He was picked up and could not get there. Walsh stays right in the pocket, good protection, rifles the completion. There's him and Hay Mooley. Provo, Utah. Joined in the backfield. And Jamal Willis, apparently with a tender ankle, has not played much in this game. Draw play to Atawaya. Good running for Atawaya, and he'll be within about a yard of another first down. Running the counter play that they run so successfully to High Mooley. This time Atawaya gets the job done. Gus Paulo Chevrolet is proud to be a sponsor of University of Utah football. Clock is moving. We approach four and a half to play. Utah's defense has been stellar in the second half. They gave away a touchdown on the first drive. Until now, BYU's really had trouble moving the ball. Walsh gives off to Hay Mooley, trying to get around the corner, and he will. Hay Mooley gets a couple. It's enough for a first down, though. And it Pretty stops good the clock. He managed to get outside of Derek Stapley. Stapley could not run him down. As the Cougars seal it off pretty good. And Mooley gets about First six yards on the carry. And he does. 4-10 to play. The clock is stopped. And the Cougars having great success on this drive. Harold Lusk, the free safety, trying to get this crowd going. Need a big defensive play somewhere here. Draw. Hey, Mooley again. And Hey, Mooley will pick up about two and a half very hard fought yards before Kafusi and Rexford stop him. Cougar's doing a good job of substituting and keeping fresh running backs and wide receivers in the ball game. Hey, Mooley is out right now. And Kapita is in. Second and eight. Lost to the air again. Has a receiver and Atuaya Kirkman is right there. They'll keep the clock running and he should be very close to a first down. Atuaya with just enough foot speed to get outside of Kirkman and Walsh with time and a good throw. Don't forget, before the end of the game, we'll be naming today's most valuable player, sponsored by Muldoon. Muldoon's most valuable player before the end of the ball game. will just keep it and that'll be enough for the first they'll stop the clock long enough to move the chains BYU driving Utes leading by three what a finish BYU has three timeouts left the Utes have two with 240 left to play in the game and the Cougars on the move trailing by three ball is at the 27 yard line there's your rushers. Been a great afternoon for Charlie Brown. Walsh. Good protection. Fires down towards the end zone. Touchdown! Or did they give it to him? Uh, I, haven't, I, haven't I, haven't seen, I haven't seen a ref signal it yet. I haven't either. I've seen no I, I have signal. not seen a ref signal it yet. I haven't either. I have not seen a sign that indicates touchdown at all. BYU celebrating. Well, it must be. It's got to be a touchdown. I don't see any It must be, but that's amazing. Apparently, that's it. 27-yard touchdown to Johnston, but 
not a single official signaled touchdown. Nobody wanted to make the call. Never saw it. That puts the Cougars up by three with an extra point coming. Extra point is good. Cougars by four, which means the Utes must get a touchdown if they want to win this game. We'll be back. Don't go. And Pulsifer. And we're going to give him our Men Love Dodge Toyota sub of the game. He pinned the Cougars down at their own one-yard line. That resulted in a Ute touchdown. So Dan Pulsifer, the Men Love Dodge sub of the game. But right now, 2.15 to go. And the Utes offense has another opportunity here. This kickoff sponsored by Ken Garf, where they back up every car they sell, and the Utes as well. Kick is away. It's returnable. Cal Beck at his one-yard line. Great block. Holy cow. And Beck still on his feet. Gets terrific yardage. Beck still up. Oh, my goodness. Beck, if he had been able to keep his feet, might have gone all the way. But what a great return for Cal Beck, the freshman. And what some great blocks downfield to spring him loose. His head out ran his feet. Oh, Neil, what a game we've seen here. This is amazing. Watch the block to the right side right there. Now watch Beck step out of the tackle. Get some help there, and now it's a race. And right here, Beck loses his balance. If he can keep it, he's gone. 67 yards. Oh, if he oh could have kept that up. I think uh, I think Dan Polster is going to have to share that sub of the game with, I think with he Mr. Is. Beck. I think he is. All right, the Utes. First and ten. Two minutes to play in this game. They trail by four, but they're in BYU territory. Draw play to Charlie Brown. And Charlie, great yardage all the way down to the 20 before Jamie Cook wraps him up. And this crowd is going crazy. This is absolutely amazing. Watch Charlie Brown on this run. He picks his spot behind the block there. And then just hanging on to the football as the Cougars try to rip it out. Charlie Brown has gone over 100 yards for the fourth consecutive game. Right now, his team trying to get into the end zone. A minute 45 to play. Clock is running. Blitz is on. Brown again, and nothing doing there. If he had one block on the left side on the linebacker, that would have gone because the linebacker on the left side was coming. University of Utah football brought to you in part by Bank One. Get a loan the easy way. Call Bank One's 30-minute loan by phone line at 1-800-352-LEND. Clock is ticking. You see it there. Now, how's this for something interesting? If the Utes score a touchdown here, it would be 34 to 31. Does that sound familiar? Best to be. Just like Straight last year. Rush. McCoy to throw. He's dumps it off to Charlie Brown, who has a lot of room. Charlie Brown. He's going to go. Touchdown, Utah. He's in. valuable player for today's game and I think it's a really an easy choice here Neil with Charlie Brown watch number 23 do the work on this one it's a good job by McCoy but watch this play beat the cornerback 
and then just power it through a tackle and into the end zone. Oh, man. I think you got to give a little assist to Cal Beck because he really set Absolutely. the Utes up with that 67-yard return. You can come up with uh, four or five real quick heroes here in the last minute. Hey. Now, plenty of time. 56 seconds, three timeouts. What Pultsburg would like to do here is get it into the end zone. No run back. This, this is incredible the way this score is exactly the same as it was last year. There's all kinds of snowballs being thrown onto the field, and that's something that you do not need to see. There's a lot of football players. And the officials are taking the yeah, time out gonna, right now. They're going to stop it. They're the football it players stop. are well protected, but there's a lot of people down there who aren't. Well, it's just plain dumb is what it is. It's just plain stupid, and it could cost the Utes a penalty here if they don't stop throwing it. Most of them coming out of the Utes student body. Enthusiasm is one thing. Idiocy is another. Yeah, that's just dangerous. And I mean, a snowball is like a rock. three, four minutes of this game. Just amazing. Dan Pulsford's kick is away. It'll be returned. That's Jason Cooper. And Cooper finds some room. And he's all the way up to the 28-yard line. And a flag is down. So you never know. There may be even more help coming. Could be face mask, way. I think. <laughs> Could be a face mask. No. Nope. Illegal block in the back against BYU. Penalty bug has bitten the Cougars today. And John Wall standing on the sideline discussing things with Robbie Bosco as they prepare to mount their final drive. Walsh has 51 seconds. The cover is in the middle. John Walsh from the shotgun. Going to the air. And he'll go to Atuaya. He'll pick up about five before he is knocked out of bounds. Creation, second down and four. 44 seconds to go. John Walsh and the Cougars trying to get back into this. There's Atuaya again right over the middle, and he'll be stopped there, but the clock is moving. We approach 35 seconds. You see it there, and the Cougars really need more than the short plays that you're seeing here. They got to get the ball down. Gene is set. Walsh again. Pass is batted. Almost intercepted by Garrett, but that pass was batted. Bronzel Miller. Moves Luther Ellis to the defensive end. We haven't seen him there in a while, but that was his position for three years here. Walsh again. Fires down and just beyond the outstretched fingertips. Of Mike Johnston. You cannot fault people in this football game for effort, can you? There's Absolutely some great effort not. going on out there, both sides. goal range if they want a tie or 70 some yards for a touchdown with the Duke defense getting in the way pass is complete and they'll mark that a big pickup for the Cougars all the way down to the 34 yard line with 17 seconds left and it was Hay Mooley coming out of the backfield Hay Mooley got in behind the defender and Walsh with a great throw able to get it down the sideline good protection Watch this, it's right on the nose. Tay Mooley gets behind Ernest Boyd. He just has a rocket arm. 17 seconds to play. Now, if you're Lavelle Edwards, do you settle for the field goal? Doesn't do you any good to tie. No, it doesn't, doesn't get you a conference championship or a no. piece of it if you tie. I it think certainly he's, doesn't. I, I think he, I'm of the opinion that he's going to try and put it in the end zone. Well, 17 seconds left. He can throw at least a couple down there from here. 
Let's go back down on the field. Sharif, what a finish. The sideline's <laughs> got to be going crazy. It's incredible. I remember the game, the exact score last year. It was incredible. I tell you, what if you have, if you are Coach Edwards, you have to go for the win, like David's been saying, because the tie would do you no good. And so defense knows that. So it's just a matter of playing the coverages and playing the receivers, letting, allowing them to get the underneath stuff, but not giving up the big one. That was the most important thing. Any yard, they have to go for the end zone. And that's what, they, that's what Coach should be telling them right now. Back to you, Dave. All with, right, Sharif. With 17 seconds, that's at least three plays for John Walsh. Well, they still have two timeouts left. Keep that in mind. Yep. You know, the Utes, the Utes almost scored too fast. There's Brian Rowley. You're going to have to cover the deep man in the end zone. You're going to cover to the outside. Where is Walsh going to throw it? To the outside, down the middle. Walsh looking. Down the middle. Walsh is going to be sacked. Fumble. Scooped up by the Utes. That is going to be it. Bronzel Miller with and the sack. And Luther Ellis. And Luther. A fitting finish. Get the... Get off the field, it isn't over yet, but a celebration that is well-deserved. There are yellow flags all over, and there's nothing, there's, doesn't take much to figure out why. Well, you can penalize the youths all you want right now, because all they need to do is put a knee down a couple of times. <laughs> oh. Coach McBride getting out on the field imploring his team to get off. But a big, big defensive play by the two defensive oh, stalwarts. The smartest guy in the stadium is Coach Whittingham. He just went in the dressing room. Oh, did <laughs> he? Just left. He just left. Ron McBride throwing his hat. Get him off the field. Oh, it's unbelievable. Now, you got to run a play here, folks, and end this football game. They're penalizing Utah clear back to the 33-yard line. Well, like I said, they can penalize it. Oh, wow, another snowball just hit one of the BYU players in the back of the head, and he didn't have his helmet on. It's just plain stupid what's going and on. It really is. You don't need that. You've got the win. You don't need to do this. It's amazing. Mike McCoy to put the knee down. Watch yourself, Rick. And the clock will run out. It's, uh, and look at this. The Cougar defensive line, the Ute offensive line, just stand up and shake you. Deja vu all over again, folks. 34 to 31. Here go the goalposts. Look at this. They burned them. Well, I'm hoping Sharif might be able to grab someone down there. Uh, Luther Ellis.